Okay, so today's game is Monopoly Deal. Now this is something I wouldn't have even touched, I wouldn't have picked up, I didn't. I saw it new and I... No, nah, no way. Um, but I heard on Board Game Geek that uh, a couple of people expressed, Okay, well, look, if you like Monopoly, here's a less painful way to get it. This is the same kind of game. Now my conclusion is it's not at all. It, completely lacks anything Monopoly really has. It does throw you towards some, uh, you know, Monopoly looking things. It uses some ideas that correspond to Monopoly. You know, you have your piece of property, you have, if you get this set, you get, uh, you get more on rent or whatever. But it doesn't have any of the feel of Monopoly, and in no way will it, uh, Will it exhibit the same kind of behavior in terms of, like, if you had a set of five people and one person knew how to play Monopoly well? Uh, the guy who plays Monopoly well will win nearly every game. I don't think that's true here. I think there's a very low curve here in terms of... Uh, there's nothing special you need to learn this. You, you get familiar with the cards and what's going to happen. And if you're reasonably intelligent, you'll be able to do as well as anyone else. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what the game is like. Um, so you grab, uh, and this is not a first look, I played it uh, opposed already. Um, you shuffle the deck of cards, and each player gets five face down. And then the rest uh, end up in a draw pile in the middle of the deck. Great. Okay, on your turn, you draw up, the pile will be down. I'll have a handful of cards. One, two, three, four, five. That's a pretty good handful. Let's get rid of this. And this. Well, we'll leave this set there. Okay. So you start with five cards. And you have different kinds of cards. Some are property cards. Your goal in this game is to get three complete sets of property cards. It doesn't matter what they are. So the railroads is, as far as I can tell, a complete set of property cards. Great, there's four of them. That's gonna be kind of hard. The utilities, Boardwalk and Park Place, and Baltic and Mediterranean, each with two are also complete sets. And I'm okay with those as well, except for the fact that uh, Baltic and Mediterranean and the utilities shouldn't really count in a real Monopoly game, but that's okay. That's just a, a thematic aspect. As far as the game goes itself, there are some two-card pairs, and that's cool. And they may not have wild cards for them that cover them, and that's also fair. You also have these action cards, which indicate um, something that you're going to do, and, or for someone else to do. And then... Uh, each card has a money value, which it can be turned in, into cash for. Well, not exactly. Properties can't. Each card has a value, though. There's also money cards. I should probably have one of these. Get rid of this property. Um, these are only usable as money. Okay, so you've got your hand, and you're holding it in your hand, right? So we'll kind of put it like this. You draw two cards on your turn. Eh, more fun. Um, and now you're allowed to play up to three cards. And there's different things you can do. So, for example, you can play property face up in front of you. And now it's available to be landed on, which only happens from action cards. There's no die rolling or anything like that. Um, you can drop money in your bank. You could drop action cards in your bank as well. Or you can play them for the action. So in this case, probably the best thing to do would be to play this straight off. It goes in the discard pile, and you grab two extra cards. Oh, now I have more. Okay. Um, and you can do that for your three plays. The problem is, if you have more than seven cards at the end of your turn, you got to discard the rest of them. Um, and basically, you're just playing these cards and following their instructions. At times, you're going to have to pay money. Money comes in two different varieties. Money can be action cards or money cards that you have in your bank, sort of a face-up pile, 
that simulates the money that you have in a game of Monopoly. Money also is your property though. So for example, if I own this railroad, I have two, see if that's readable in any way, two, uh, two Monopoly money or whatever um, available because of that. So if I have to pay money, let's say I get hit with some kind of event which makes me pay two bucks. Well, I can pay either out of here and I can't get change, or I could give him my property face up. Um, money is worth a lot less than property in general. No big shock there. As far as I can tell, two people can have the same property in the sense that there's wild cards and you can you could hold a railroad but somebody else has the complete set. Yeah. Uh, wild cards get played in either direction. It's really about it though. That's that's the whole of the game. I'm going to do a playthrough of this. I was debating whether to just do this as a quick hit, but honestly I think there's enough of a game here that it's worth capturing. Okay, so let's get started. I'm uh, breaking my normal rule here. I'm only playing a four-player game. Normally I play a game at the uh, game at the maximum that it'll hold. In this case, it's just really a logistical thing more than anything else. Um, I see no reason to believe that the game is terribly better or worse in different numbers of players, but it might be a little longer the more players you add. So, yeah, this is not something we want to really go through too heavily. I'm going to start here and then I'm going to work counterclockwise because I like counterclockwise. Now, it's kind of hard. At the beginning, I'll... Uh, I'll show the whole hands on the first turns just to give you an idea of if there are any additional cards. But then I've got to kind of play it on my own and just run through it. Okay, so initial thought, do you want properties down? Normally you'd say, oh yeah, in Monopoly you want properties right up there. In this, no, you really don't because you could lose them. You don't have to pay anything if you have no money down. But if you have money down, you have to pay that money. Oh, there was something I forgot. If you uh, completely have no cards at the beginning of your turn, you can draw five new ones instead of two. So there's kind of this desire not to keep a handful of cards, to keep things moving, to keep things playing. Well, this guy's going to grab two cards. That's his first action. It's more of this. Another wild card, great. Okay. Um. So now... He probably wants to start laying down some bank. And then we'll put the rest of his hand face up. Why bank? Well, once you have property, you want money to protect it. This money, when you get charged for rent or something else, is what you give to another player. But if you don't have any, you gotta pay in property. You may pay in property anyway as your option, but it's generally wise not to. So let's take a look at this guy. He's got some interesting cards. He's got a rent card, which can be any color. Now, you'd think, okay, I'll slap this down, grab some money right away. Ah, I'd wait until an opportunity comes. Uh, this is not a game where you just want to collect the money. It's something where, first of all, he's, not, he's only going to get a million bucks. That means nothing. Now, of course, he has this double the rent card, which would allow him to double that. But if you can set things up so you can do a big hit with that, you might actually get something valuable. Or if you see that you can get something valuable. Right now he doesn't have that, but he does have this card. As his first action, he'll draw some other stuff. Hey, he's got another one. we got to be careful about two, four, six. Yeah, we can take another two cards. And now I'm going to lay some bank down. Not really necessary. But if I don't do it, there's going to be, um, I, I won't have built it up before I start laying my properties down. Well, I think we've kind of seen how the first turn should go for people. I'm going to play out a little bit and come back. Well, the fourth player has the first one without some cool options. Uh, he doesn't have those go cards or whatever. He has one bank card. An action card he'd kind of like to hold. He has some high-valued rents here. Maybe that could come in handy. He's got a couple of properties that are lower-valued. Does he want to slap lower-valued ones down? He doesn't have a whole lot of money to protect himself. He's going to put these down and hold his cards. And now we have somebody who's the first kind of target player. 
Speaking of which, let's go back to the last player. He has an interesting card in his hand. This Just Say No. You can pretty much cancel any action card played against you with this. That's a very powerful card. If somebody tries to do something or make a trade that you don't want or whatever, and, uh, and by the way, make a trade that you don't want. I'll show you the other card there. It, there is no trading in this game, and that's what's wrong with it. Uh, you can steal a property from the player of your choice. That's the trading. You just take things from people with cards. Or you take things by making them owe you money. Um, it just, it does not feel like Monopoly at all in that respect. All right, I'll keep going. Remember this guy over here has a rent card? Well, he managed to double up his pale blues, so he's playing them down. He threw some money down as well. You gotta have things kind of set up to take advantage of an opportunity. Um, he wouldn't get anything right now. If he charged two million, he could get a big lo lump of money. Uh, if he charged four million, he could get a big lump of money. He can't get any property yet. So it may not be worth playing a rent card for that. But it may be, because if he had got another one, he'd be as set up as anyone to take something from that player. Well, we found someone who has something they can do of value. And he's been caught pulling all the cool cards. He pulled, he played a go card, but he pulled a pair of these that apparently didn't get shuffled well. Just sitting together. They both can force somebody to pay you five million. Now, I don't think the money is countable. That would be against Monopoly. But you can kind of look at the stacks and you can say there's money there. There's money there. Which do I want better? I'm going to hit this guy. He's got two properties out. I'm going to hit him with a debt collector for five million. Well, he doesn't have five million. He has three, four, five. He has to give all this money and property over. That makes the second one not really worthwhile. So he's going to make another action with that. But he's just stolen these properties, a pair, which is very good because you need three sets to complete. Now, this is only two out of a set, but that's okay. All right. Um... Getting to an interesting stage in the game, this player, for example, has no money to put down in your bank. And by the way, your money is useless in your hand. You can only use it to pay if it's in your bank, just like your property. Uh, whatever is in your hand is also safe, though. No one can take it unless there are cards that allow you to, which I haven't seen. Um, but he basically was forced to throw some property down, and he threw three down, including kind of valuable park place. This puts you at risk. Uh, there's little value to putting your property down except that you need to get your cards out of your hand. I'm going to wrap this one and send it up. Try to keep the sizes a little smaller. And we'll come back. I need to put some kind of marker. How about this pen and these tweezers? To indicate that it's this guy's turn. Hopefully that'll be enough to remind me. Normally I use a die and obviously this is a little different. It might confuse me. All right, upward.